It's kind of insane if you think about it. Today's vlog day 1002. That's a mouthful. Good morning and welcome to day two of my 20 and 20. What is a 20 and 20, you might be asking? Huh. I was gonna tell that story yesterday and I, I just didn't have enough time. I had so much stuff to share from the first Arani's month and I couldn't resist making a video that was exactly 20 minutes and 20 seconds long. It just never really happened. The basic idea of a 20 and 20, it's a drinking game originally. The idea was that you would go around and in one day have one drink in each Arani's month in Paris, all 20 of them, and nobody ever makes it, nobody survives. It's a ridiculous and horrible idea. But in spite of being a horrible idea for drinking, it's a great idea for tourism. How's it going? <laughs> the best part, hi whoever that was. Hi, it was nice to meet you. The best part of doing it this way is that I can split up each day. It's a lot to explore each Arani's month, but I can do a combination of exploring and also sharing some highlights from my guide with you. Downside is that because we're doing it every day and we're kind of constrained by, you know, real time, some of the scheduling issues are gonna crop up like today. The first place I'm gonna show you is closed, which is a huge disappointment because it's the number one thing I wanted to do in this Arani's month, but there are sacrifices you gotta make if you're gonna stick to it. And I'm gonna get this whole thing done in 20 days. So if you wanna join me, today's gonna have a couple of guest appearances as well from my friend Megan, from my friend Oliver, maybe from Laura, and then, you know, it's basically gonna be purely food oriented because there's not a lot to see or do in the second Ronnie's month. That's not entirely true. There are a couple things to see. I'm sure there's plenty to do that I may just not know about because I'm not invited into the secret cool clubs in the second. But in the meantime, we've got some awesome street art and this section is fantastic. Rue Poissonnier turns into Rue Petite Carreau and it turns into a nice little walking district. Let me show you this. And then we come to a critical juncture. It's critical for two reasons. One, if we continue down the Petit Carreau, it turns into Rue Montegoy, which is where we're gonna go with Oliver later because it's his favorite street and he used to live over here. So he wants to help show us that. The other thing is Bone Shaker Donuts right behind me. So good. The best donuts in Paris that I have had. I've yet to have a better donut in Paris. Super disappointing because they're closed on Sundays. Ah! I, I was so excited to come here. Actually, I planned on coming here with both Laura and Oliver. We were gonna have a, a donut party. Donut party, unfortunately. Averted. In the meantime though, there is a delicious croissant around the corner that's in my top five croissants video. Can't guarantee it is actually one of the best croissants in the city because again, there's some secrets around, but this one, highly, highly worth it. When you get down here, turn on Rue de Nil, another adorable street, and just at the end is tasty, tasty deliciousness. Croissant. I got a pan of as well, but I think I'm gonna give that to Megan. This croissant, wow. I wish this place was in my neighborhood. Oh, dear Lord, it's so delicious. Okay, on to coffee with Megan. Here's the plan. But in the meantime, oh, I can't, I gotta put my sunglasses on. Grab a croissant in my hand. Time to head to coffee at Mata Mata Coffee. Sun, ow, sunglasses attached. Let's go. sidetrack I'm gonna be late but this is worth it this is the spot over here in the second very close to Matamata coffee which is where I'm going so that's the hint of the day is the sparkling water water fountain I don't know if you'll remember that from Richard and I stumbled across it but here it is Rue de Montmartre and Rue Leopold quoi what was that Rue, Rue Leopold Bellin yep Rue Leopold Bellin we're not here for sparkling water we're here for coffee I can't go in with this croissant though I need to finish this that'd be rude oh man that's a good croissant. It's like very savory. I'm gonna try it. Oh god. I had coffee the other day and it tasted like oranges. <laughs> it tasted kind of like this. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. All I need is you on the wheel coming in for a really nice picture. That would be perfect. I think we can make that happen. I got oh, yeah. them on, and I went building in the background. This is what you have to do to help Oliver with his Instagram stories. Uh, <laughs> hey, this is Oliver. He's going to be walking us through Rue what? I'm going to walk you through what's known uh, in my circles as the best street in Paris. And I put my whole reputation on the line. I'm looking forward to this. Okay. But first, Instagram stories. So go around the corner. And when I go, go around the corner. Okay. Go! I 
think I got it. Here. You're Jay Swanson, 1,000 vlogs plus. We let Ollie finish his coffee and then let's go for a stroll. But you didn't come here to see us ride wheels. You came here to see the second Aranis Mont. If you don't know Oliver yet, has the premier English-speaking podcast in Paris. Do you want me to hold your hand? I'm good. Actually, I'd love to hold your hand, but when I said I was gonna do the second Aranis Mont, Oliver reached out to me and he said, dude, if you don't do Rue Montregoy, you're, you're gonna miss out on the best street in all of Paris. And I said, best street in Paris? He said, yes. I remember you said, wasn't it famed writer Elaine Shalino who wrote a book about the only street in Paris about Rue de Marty? I said, that's right, Jay. <laughs> that is exactly what I said, I said in this situation. You're right, but she was wrong. Oh my gosh. The only street in Paris. Yeah. Rue Montague. And we're gonna go check it out right now. We're gonna get Oliver's overview on the wisdom of why it's the best street in all of Paris. Also, right now, whatever street we're on right now is fantastic for riding wheels. This is great. Pedestrian night today. Okay, so every Sunday there's no traffic, which is, it's already a pedestrian street, but now it's extremely pedestrianized. So if you look up and down, you won't see any cars. You see people, and what are they doing? Lining up for some of the best food in the city. There's cheesemongers, fishmongers. Cheese They've got any monger that you want, they have it here. You even got a Paul monger behind you. Yes, a Paul monger. <laughs> but that's not in my top three. You used to live near here. Well, that's right. In fact, I'll show you. That street is my street. We should go and look at the door of it. Let's go look at the door, door. the door behind which the magic used to happen. Come with me. You're from Pullman. I am. So in Pullman, much like in Perth where I'm from, we don't have doors like this on buildings like this. We have doors like this all over the place in Pullman. Well, I've never been Not to true, Pullman. we don't. But imagine, I don't know, this is just like an incredible uh, way to move into a new city to live behind doors like this. I wonder if the code's still work. I forgot try the code. Try it, try it. Let's see if he can get into his old apartment building here. There's also, one of these apartments is for sale. Got it? No. Turns out you don't need high security when people can't remember what the codes are in the first place. Well, the thing is, it was beautiful in there. It was like this. It, it, I'm not going to go on about it because you can't see it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Right? Yeah. I'm so glad if we get this on film because this will be a memory for life. I never feel it. So, this was my courtyard with all the trees like a jungle. I, I lived the very top floor, the Jean de Vaughan. Do you see the, the chimney in the middle? Yeah. Those two windows in front on the left, that's where I live. Yeah. For two years. Imagine that. Magic of the second. Bonjour. Bonjour. This is definitely the highlight of the second tour. Okay, back to the spec. But for me, at least, one of the things I really enjoy, especially about the center of Paris on the weekends, is in the morning, and Sundays especially, is just dead. You can just wander. Like, this is so quiet. You could whisper. Well, you were whispering. So if you start at the top of the McDonald's, Bone Shaker Donuts, which I showed you earlier, is right behind me. And then on this side is the top of Rue Montreuil. They've got homemade arch here. And we're going to walk all the way down. And it basically runs all the way to the end of the, the southern border of the second. And we'll pop out basically at saint Eustache, the church that I showed you yesterday. Technically, even in the first, it gets into. into so we first? will stop before we get to the church. We're, gonna, we're not going to touch. Home. We're not going to touch the first today. I spent enough time there yesterday. Okay, what you need to do, if you're taking the metro, you get off at Sontier, which is this one right here. You'll pop out into the world under the arch. That is where you should begin your journey. Slightly downhill. If you've got a wheel, it'll be easier. If you're just rolling on a scooter, also easier. Come with me, I'll show you the street. Oh, what, you want a joke? Yeah, I'd love a joke. Well, uh, I get nervous doing my jokes. Well, well then now we can get my reaction in the okay. same shot. Would Jay? I, yes, sir. What's the fastest arrondissement in Paris to visit? I don't know. It's this one! It only takes a second. Ah! Nailed it. But we have reached the border of our, uh, our little tour here. We cannot go any further. I tried to explain this yesterday, but I ran out of time and I also blocked what I was trying to show with my head. How you can tell which around is you're in at any given time. On the street signs, oh here, Oliver will point it out. On the street signs, only when you don't really need it, but you've always got the Iranismat right at the top there. So we know we're in the second because it's marked on all the street signs. And if we look across the street at Rue Etienne Marcel here, 
You can see in the tiny little Napoleon hat across the street that it's the first Aronis month. So this is the border. We're going from second to first. Not going that far because, I mean, pfft, spent all day there yesterday. I don't need to go back. But at any given point, if you're not sure which Aronis month you're in, look for a street sign, check out the little Napoleon hat on top, and that should tell you where it is, where you are, where everything is at that moment. So there you have it, Rue Montego, the best street in Paris. Now you've seen it. The second thing is being able to pronounce it, and the third thing is being able to spell it. I got no idea. <laughs> That's it. Bye, Oliver. <laughs> That's the French version of a mic drop. This is turning into a very industrious morning. Hey. We lost Oliver, which is tragic, but we're about to gain a Laura. In the meantime, I want to go through this roundabout again because we have the opportunity. Since I did it yesterday in the first, it only makes sense that I would do it today in the second. And I did look it up yesterday. It is Louis XIV in his Romanesque glory. There's Space Invaders out here too. I'm not gonna go, ugh, Sunday, this is amazing. I could go around this circle forever. I'm gonna go around one more time. I was gonna say, I'm not gonna do this for, I'm gonna do this at least one more time. And then I'm gonna meet Laura for lunch at Desenco Larmin, which is in my guide. That's the plan at least. We'll see if we find something else we wanna stumble into. If you haven't gotten my guide yet, I have a guide that breaks down all my recommendations around Ronnie's Mont by Ronnie's Mont all around the city, as well as a bunch of essays on where to stay, how to avoid scams, all that kind of good stuff. So we're gonna go to lunch, maybe find a place for a drink. I have some cocktail bars and stuff that I've referenced in the guide, but it is Sunday and I'm not really sure that we're gonna stick around for that. So I'm just gonna wander around the streets a little bit on my wheel, see if I find any more Space Invaders, and then we'll get lunch. been inside the opera comique before. I wonder if it's as funny as it sounds. This is great. I'm already really enjoying this whole 2020 thing just because it gives me the perfect excuse to go out and explore a whole bunch. And I wish I could do it on Sunday every day because the, the streets are mine. <laughs> The second also brings you right up to the opera, but doesn't include the opera, the famous opera, the Opera Garnier, so we'll have to save that for another time. In the meantime, it's time for lunch. One of the things the second does have going for it, and I have been to a couple of these, is there are stand-up comedy clubs, smaller theaters, lots of them. They're just kind of all over the place. So if you do want to go see a show, this is a neighborhood for you. Definitely walk around a little bit. I've been in this one. Come catch a show. You might want to see what a little bit of French stand-up comedy is like. It's very cold style. It's ramen weather. And she's just been reintroduced to... Wait, is it Paris the first time you've ever had ever. ramen? I've only ever had ramen at one place. This will be the second. Okay, this is the first place I ever had ramen in Paris. So it's a good, it's a good time, good introduction. What's your, what's your review? So it was really good. This is the only the second place I've ever had ramen though. So <laughs> in comparison to the other place, that one is still my number one. I can see that. But this one's good. I actually think I would agree. I think her favorite one is the better one between the two, but you'll have to wait and find out about that later. It, it is in my guide though. I put it in my updated guide so you could cheat and find out right now. If you go by my guide right now, that's the call to action. I'm gonna show you one more place. Spoiler. I'm gonna show you one more place. It's closed today and they don't normally open till five o'clock anyways, uh, but it's my favorite tap house in the second and it's really, really good. The last place, which is disappointingly not open on Sundays, but is in my guide is Hoppy Corner, which is a fantastic little tap house. They got like 20 taps or something like yeah, that, don't yeah. they? Lots of taps, very good. Anyways, really good spot. Come have a beer, it's great. We would have like a beer to end the day, but it's sadly closed. That's the second, this is where I started. It's a very small around his mount, easy to get around. Fantastic, all around. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> Just come bounce around. It'll be great. I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning for the third Ronnie's Mont, and we'll see what we discover in that. Hopefully, just some good time exploring. See you tomorrow.